Let's try this rib off that $50 cooker. <laughs> Regulators! Mount up! Okay, there's the 18 inch Weber Smoky Mountain. And there's the 16 inch Brinkman Smoking Grill. We got them both going already. And I gotta get them monitored by the Smart RO. I'm just monitoring pit temps them come up then we'll throw some baby backs on these once they're up to temp see how long it takes for them to be nice and tender and taste delicious do you really need to spend the money on something like that or can you go with something like that let's find out okay so this is the 18 inch Weber Smoky Mountain bullet smoker uh, as you can tell it's a little bit taller than the Brinkman there's the Brinkman. Let me take the cover off the Brinkman. So you can see the Weber Smoky Mountain 18 inch is a little taller. And it's also a little bigger in the diameter. Where the uh, Brinkman is like 15 to 16, this is 18 inch. The uh, material is uh, quite a bit thicker too and the fit is a lot better on a Weber Smoky Mountain. So, take the lid off. The grates are even thicker, solid. You have a top one and you have a bottom one, just like the uh, Brinkman. You have a much deeper water pan. Take that out. There's the water pan. And you look down in there, you actually have a ring, charcoal ring, and you have a grate for your charcoal to sit on. Now, on a Weber Smoky Mountain, you have side vents. Let's see if we can open the F3 three side vents down in there. Let's see one there. And then there's one back over here. So we'll open this one. There. So you have three to adjust the air intake, whereas the Brinkman, you just have air coming up from the bottom around the charcoal basket. So that's the difference between the two, besides the quality. Um, also, so you can see you just have the centerpiece. The centerpiece comes off and you just have your uh, charcoal tray down there. So let's get our grate back in there, like so. And then you got your ring and you build your charcoal around that. Then you set your center on top. A lot of fun doing this one-handed, like so. You also have their front door, but in your, in this case, I'm going to drop this one in, or actually put in your water pan. It also works as a heat deflector, just like the water pan in the uh, Brinkman. Then you put in your bottom grate, and then you put in your top grate. So, you get your lid back on. And another big difference on these, this one, you have a thermometer on the lid on the top. That's the thermometer right there. This one, you have an outtake vent where you don't have one on your Brinkman other than along the sides. I wonder if that's why that's designed that way. So that becomes your regulator. But that's the difference between the two. Okay, let's first look at the uh, WSM. Still sitting there, perfect. The uh, Smart Row says it's at 240 temp. Beautiful color on those, looking great. Just what I want. Back on. All right, now let's take a look at. Let's take a look at what the Brinkman's doing. 
Now this one's a little darker than the other. Definitely timed it right. It's been a little more erratic in the temperature, but uh, I think we're sitting all right. We're sitting at uh, 200 right now. And uh, we'll add a few more coals and get them wrapped up. Okay, so we got them both wrapped and back on the old uh, two smokers. Got enough charcoal in there. We'll probably let them go two hours now. And then uh, we'll just monitor the uh, charcoal and the temps. Like I said, the WSM is holding temp a lot better and using less fuel than the Brinkman. And you can kind of tell why. I don't know if you can see how that thing is leaking the smoke. Um, whereas on the WSM, you really don't see it leaking. And that's just the quality of the bill. But both of them are looking good. Uh, the Brinkman one, a little bit darker, uh, so it's running maybe a little hotter. Uh, but uh, both of those racks hmm, look really good. So we'll give them some time and we'll come back, check them in a bit. All right, it's time to check these see how they're doing these ribs now I get a lot of people asking me how do I know when my ribs are done well I have my way of checking and I'll show you it okay we'll start with the ones here in the Brigman today I just have a metal skewer usually I have a wood one and all I do is I just take it and I poke it in here I try not to hit a bone. If it slides right through it, then I know they're done. Like that right there. If that just slides right through. I like to feel a little bit of attention to it. Um, that way it's not fall off the bone. But these are, yeah, that's perfect. Perfect the way I want it. So let's get these off of here. Take a look at it. Okay, this was the rack that was on the uh, Brinkman smoking grill. Just have a quick look at these, see how they're looking. Oh, they smell amazing. You notice I like to double wrap. Oh yeah, look at those. Look at this bone pull back here. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Little bit of a bend to it. Beautiful. Let's get this back on that smoker real quick. All right, these are the ones that were on the uh, Weber Smoky Mountain. They had a little more of a bend to them when I brought them in here. So let's just have a look, see what they look like. Once again, 
Oh man, it smells incredible. See, a little bit of a more of a bend to it. Not quite as much bone pull back, but you still got bone pulling back there. Looking great. Let's get it back on that right. This is Lewis from R Shack Barbecue and other things. Okay, let's get these sauced. So we're just going to use some sweet baby rays tonight. A nice little bead of that on there. Give it a little brush. Mm. <laughs> That's a beautiful looking rack of ribs right there. Then we're going to come in and we're going to just give it a little more of that pecan seasoning. Mm. Yeah. Sauce all over it. Mm. Beautiful looking racks. Thick. They are so thick. Beautiful. Let's take these beautiful ribs off the Weber Smoky Mountain first. Get this lid off of the Franklin Smoking Grill. We're going to start with the Weber Smoky Mountain ones first. right there. Now let's get the other way. So can you tell the difference? I can't. I'd say no. Here's our two beautiful racks of baby back ribs. This one is off the Brinkman Smoking Grill. This one's off the 18 inch Weber Smoky Mountain. Honestly, the finished product, cannot tell a difference between them. Great bone pullback on both of them. It's just beautiful. So, next thing would be, let's just cut into one of these. We're gonna go in the WSM right there let's cut one rib off all right look at that beautiful hmm so that's the WSM now this is off the Brinkman your $50 grill A little bit, not the greatest cut in the world, but look at that. It's got some nice smoke ring. Perfectly done, just the way I like them. Whoops. Just the way I like them. 
Let's get in here and sample these. Let's start with the one from the WSM. Let's check this bite out. Mm. Nice clean bite. Oh, <laughs> that is so good. Oh. Just a little bit off the bone. Mm. So much flavor. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Mm. That is a good rib right there. That base layer of that killer hogs all purpose with that layer of pecan rub on top of it. Mm. And then sweet baby rays. That is good barbecue sauce. All right. Here's the one off the Brinkman smoking grill. Let's see what it does. Mm. Wow. Absolutely no difference between the two. That was a perfect rib. Mm, that was both. Mm. Excellent ribs. So good. Done perfectly. Just the way I like them. Some people like them a little more done. I don't. I like them when they're just a little bit of a bite to them. And you can't get much better than that. That was so good. <laughs> Sorry. Just can't help myself. Let's talk about this for a minute and then I'm gonna cut these up and we're gonna have some great dinner tonight. Saw how I did that. I wanted to do a comparison can a $50 Brinkman do just as good a job as the Weber Smoky Mountain? Verdict. Well, yes it can. Now, there is some things you have to keep in mind. One, you got to learn how to control that temperature. Because it's going to fluctuate more. It's going to fluctuate more than WSM. You really don't have vents to play with. So you have to do it with your fire management. And that's what I did. Now, you saw how I started out. I started out with uh, 16 coals, eight on each side. I put my fire starter in the middle. I dumped 10 more coals on top of that. What I found is that did not heat up the grill sufficiently. So I added 10 more uh, about 20 minutes in from when I lit them and it started creeping up it was up over 200 and then i added 10 more got me up to the 230 to 240 range what i found is with the brinkman about every half hour i had to add 10 more coals to maintain my temp range of 220 to 260 is what i was running the wsm it was about every hour i had to put about 10 in so their fuel management is a little bit better. I probably could have even gotten better than that, but I just wanted to keep that temp right there between 240 and 260 on it, and it did a fabulous job. Both of them finished up about the same time. They both heated up about the same, and then they both finished about the same. And these ribs here, if you were to serve these and say, hey, could somebody tell me the difference? Nobody could tell you the difference. It came out exactly the same. You saw they were about the same size of rack. They used the same seasonings. They used the same sauce, same coals, everything. And they came out almost identical. The Weber Smoky Mountain has beautiful color, great bone pullback. The Brinkman, great bone pullback. Beautiful, beautiful color, pretty much the same. So, yes, you can. I do think for ease of cook, the Weber Smoky Mountain is definitely worth the extra money just because you can control that fire a little better, the temperature better. You're not fighting those colds. It's thicker. You know, this day was probably in the 90s, so. That really didn't play into too much temperature wise they're both the same so 
yeah, it's a great comparison. Like I said, Brinkmans are not made anymore as far as I know, but you can still find them. You can even find them in the secondary market if you want to play around with them, like I did. This was a great cook. You can do it. I don't think you're gonna get a spare. You're gonna, if you did a spare rib, you'd have to cut them in half and get them on there. I also don't like the idea of putting them on the bottom rack. I think you're gonna have too much heat on the bottom and blocking the heat on the top. So you're gonna have very uneven cook. So the way I did it with the baby backs, just on the top rack, it's probably the way to go. But you can play around and experiment too. Like I always say, you can do this too. It's not that hard. Till next time, my friends. Grill on. Let's go eat. I gotta tell you, in a way, I feel a little giddy. It's the easiest way to say it. When I first got into grilling many years ago, I had a Brinkman smoker, very similar to the one I used tonight. And I really didn't know what I was doing. And I could not get that thing to come down in temperature. I burnt the crap out of everything I used on it. And that was my fault. Because I would just fill that thing full of coals, take the lighter fluid all over it, throw a match in there, and hope stuff would come out good. Over the years, I've kind of learned more watching YouTube videos, asking questions, reading books, and things like that. And I've learned more about fire management and how to control that. And this is a result from that. Did I know I was going to do that? No, I didn't. I knew what I could get on the Weber, not on the Brinkman. And it did it just as well as the Weber. So it was a win-win.